Fatima is a cutter. She has a handful of instruments, but her main tool is a razor blade. Yeah, how sharp is it? Can she show us? Oh. That's what she uses to slice off female genitalia, a brutal mutilation which the Somali region of Puntland is trying to outlaw. Most of the girls here, Fatima's already cut. That's how she's made her living. It's a job which until now has been seen as an honorable one. She'll even cut her relatives. And these, her two little granddaughters, does she hope to eventually do them? <laughs> Fatima demonstrates for us how she carries out the procedure. A little girl willingly takes part in this show. They're typically held down by relatives and conditioned to believe it's a privilege, a rite of passage. She shows us how they sometimes cover their faces to stifle the screams. Despite the region's attempts, a law banning FGM has yet to be discussed or passed in Puntland's parliament. So cutters like Fatima are still very much in business. She explains why the girls are cut so young, usually between the ages of six and ten and her explanation is telling. So Cafio is the optimum age. She's seven years old and Cafio is not her real name. After much prompting from the older women, Cafio insists she wants to be cut. People will be like ashamed for me, so I can't live within this camp. We try to get her mother to reconsider, but with around five other circumcisions going on in nearby homes, she insists she's doing what's necessary. Is there anything that would persuade you not to circumcise your daughter? My mother come to Africa. She's saying no. Why not? Why, why is there nothing that would persuade her? Why is she so determined? She's saying uh, when the girl is just grown up up to 18 and she's ready, prepared to be married, nobody will marry, so men will chase her away. The circumcision theatre today is the family's tin shack home and the older women think Cafio's lucky. She'll be injected with local anaesthetic that they never had before the razor blade was wielded. The cutter already has the needle threaded to stitch her up almost entirely closed so her future husband will know she is a virgin. We've decided not to show you what happens next. Inside, our appeals were met with laughter. We're doing the best for our daughter, they said. It takes less than half an hour to change Cafio's body forever. When it's done, the cut is celebrated and her legs are bound to keep the stitches in place. It'll remain for a week. Our team reported this to the police but with no law in place, it's impossible to act, and most still don't understand what's wrong with it. I told uh, my daughter that to be happy and then to, to just have fun with the other girls, and then to tell that I'm circumcised, and she should be proud that she's circumcised. <laughs> the maternity hospital in Garraway is full of women suffering from the cut years later. Raha's baby was born a few hours ago by caesarean because she couldn't deliver normally. Can I ask how she feels towards her mother for allowing this to happen? <laughs> she said this answer has two aspects. My mother did this because of ignorance number one, and she did this because her great mother did this to her. But me, that since I know the complications, I will, I will try to cut this cycle. Does she have any lasting resentment towards her mother, though? Because her mother would know about the complications, too. She's <laughs> 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 
about what she did for me to me. She feels bad about it, mm. angry. Her aunt, who's listening, takes issue with that. She's helped with dozens of cuttings. Our community will not accept uncircumcised girl. Nobody will come and marry her. In the next ward, Zaina is recovering from her sixth stillborn baby because of the difficulties caused by the childhood circumcision. She has just one six-year-old daughter, who she will have circumcised too. If you'd had the choice, would you have had it? Yes. She said, if you give me juice, I, 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 I will circumcise myself. And tell me why? So <laughs> tall. <laughs> she said she say now she is she say now she's a married woman with one living child. If not circumcision she wouldn't have a man to marry her. The problems after circumcision start almost immediately. Shakri was sewn up so completely her bodily functions were agonizing and she swiftly got infections. She'll now have to have surgery, but despite this being the only option so she can actually pass urine as well as cope with her menstrual cycle, she doesn't want it because she fears alienation in her community. <laughs> I'm worried the other girls will bully me after the operation, she says, because they'll know I'm not circumcised. Her mother feels horribly guilty, and there's a suspicion the family will end up having the little girls circumcised twice. Zara, too, was cut twice, and still the problems went on. It's a lifelong trauma. I'm getting married, I get a preg a pregnant, then I'm afraid how to deliver the baby. I, I ask every woman, how you deliver the Every woman, she told me, you, they will cut you. You know what they close, they will cut again. Then I afraid, afraid. But alhamdulillah, I don't bring. I make a ser surgery, surgery, mm -hmm. Then I get only one baby. It's an issue which goes to the very top of this deeply conservative society. The woman known as the First Lady of Puntland is not alone in denouncing the practice as very un-Islamic. This is a no FGM zone. She's caused quite a stir by spearheading a campaign to have FGM banned. The presidential determination to end these cultural traditions is deeply personal. I went through it when I was like in six or seven years old. And I participated in getting the, all the things that needed to be used for the practice. Because I thought everybody was doing it, all the girls like my age had to go through it. So it's just, if you don't do it, then you are alienated, you're not part of the... But things change. Many, many years later, we learn it's not, it's just a tradition, and tradition is just, could be good or bad, and this is really ugly, bad tradition. But even in Bertinley town, where they've introduced zero tolerance to FGM, it's hard to enforce, especially when the procedure has been a source of cash for so many in the community. The First Lady explained what they've been telling her. They don't do it anymore, but what happened is that we have no livelihoods, we have no jobs, there's no alternative livelihoods, so we're stuck now, we're so poor. And even if the women are persuaded, there's a lot of work to be done on the men about female circumcision. I just want to ask them how they feel about marrying a woman who is not circumcised. Women should be circumcised in line with the Islamic Sharia. Yet I, have, I, I, I wanted to marry and choose my wife in line with the Sharia. And even though religious leaders in Puntland issued a joint decree speaking out against all forms of cutting, some clerics are still preaching that partial genital cutting is good. There are things that Islam says have to be done. Cutting nails, cutting the clitoris and cutting pubic hair. But Puntland's First Lady and a slew of worldwide bodies insist that's simply wrong. It's barbaric 
and not a Quranic ruling at all. You will still have a lot of people who are misinformed about the, the, program, the, the, the practice. We still think that the girl's value and dignity and cleanness really depends to be circumcised and mutilated and cut. But that's, that's really not in any way you can explain. It's, it's very uncivilized, it's un, it, relig, it's, it has no base in religion, it has no base in, in human rights. But the president's people are going to take some convincing. In a few weeks' time, this little four-year-old will be circumcised along with her older sister, one of hundreds of girls mutilated every day in this country. Alex Crawford, Sky News in Puntland, Somalia.